Welcome back. This is Keeping It Real. I'm David Grossman. We have um, uh, Alan Gleshko here from allmaxhomes.ca. Alan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I I met you uh, last time you were here for Gary's uh, show. Gary Shapiro had a show here on our network, and um, and I've you know called you a few times. You're you're always busy doing inspections, (laughs) which is what a home inspector should be doing. And you're obviously very intense when you're doing it because you are you are focused, and uh, so um, I, I was quite impressed. And I also checked out uh, on Home Stars. I like to do I like to do my research, you know. <laughs> um, and wow, uh, I mean, like over over a hundred, couple hundred, couple hundred reviews, and they're all incredible. Yeah, we, we try to go above and beyond. Yeah, so that's so that's really good. So tell us, how how did you get into the uh, home inspections uh, business? Um, I did renovations, like most inspectors in the past, uh, or there's some kind of formal training an inspector usually has. Uh, I realized I didn't want to I didn't want to slave deep into my 40s and 50s, continuing on with uh, renovations. And I always had an inquiring mind. I wanted to know, well, why am I doing it this way? And mm-hmm. I didn't have the right education at the time. The guys that were leading my, uh, or supervising me, they didn't have the answers for me. And so I, I went to, to follow up on that and I said, well, let's, let's do some research. Let, let's find out why I'm installing it this way. I'm implementing it in this fashion. And I realized I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, the people educating me, they had no idea what they were doing. Right. So I went, uh, I went for further, uh, further education, got, uh, got uh, graduated with, with honors from Humber, went through the building department uh, courses, mm. and then I shadowed engineers and architects for, for oh. years after that and had great mentors, building, building code inspectors as mentors. So got thrown into the lion's den, so to speak, in terms of the construction world, and uh, then opened up my own firm, and uh, we've grown successfully for the last uh, seven years. Well, it's very interesting. I guess some of these uh, inspectors, or I should say uh, some of the renovators, like they don't know why they're doing it. So if they don't know why they're doing it, it may or may not be right. Yeah, there are trades, electrical, plumbing, that have licenses. Some don't. Let's say roofers, we don't have some baseline standards that uh, have some kind of regulations. Uh, inspectors also don't have regulations, so there's a lot of inconsistencies in terms of education. So you'll have the, you'll have the ups and downs of what kind of uh, product you're getting or service you're getting. Er- earlier in the show, we were talking with uh, Albert Frank, and, and I mentioned this uh, idea. Um, you know, the, well, and he mentioned the two with respect to this uh, cooling unit. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are, I guess there are times, uh, depending on the season, you know, there's rain, there's no rain, it's cold, it's hot. That there, you know, there are things that you're going to be very hard to detect. How do you, how do you manage that? Well, we do have our limitations. It's keeping in mind it's a fully visual inspection. Um, but as a seasoned or you know, veteran inspector, there are symptoms that you should try to diagnose. Uh, and and interpret, puzzle it together for your client. And at the very least, if you can't identify it, uh, as as Frank mentioned, a latent effect, you can ask for further investigation. You can ask them to inquire, or more importantly, uh, you can ask them in writing, as Frank mentioned, whether it's an email or some kind of documentation, what they know about that. Is there a known history about that? Because now they have a fiduciary duty to inform you as the prospective purchaser to uh, let you know about what they know about it. And hopefully they're not masking, and hopefully they'll be honest with you. And if not, well, then that's when you get Frank involved. Right. Now, um, are there times when you have, would have no idea about certain types of problems or just not visible? Absolutely. So being a fully visual-based inspection, there are times where vendors will intentionally mask the problem. It's sometimes cheaper to mask it and pray that the inspector won't find it than it is to actually make the repair. So, and you can be, you know, as we learned, you could be held... Liable for that. Liable for that. So, Absolutely. Um, so there, there really are no shortcuts. If you're selling a house and there's a problem, uh, you're better off dealing with it. Absolutely. It's always, it's always of the, uh, the best intention to be fully open, fully disclose all the problems with the home to the vendors. And that way they can at least budget for it and, 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 be, and the fiduciary duty has been passed. So um, that being said, that's not always the case. <laughs> People will, will find the path of least resistance and would rather mask something mm-hmm. than spend, could be hundreds or even thousands of dollars repairing it. Right. So, so what would be some of the things, let's say, for example, where, you know, you get called in to inspect the place and everybody thinks it's a routine uh, uh, inspection and then, you know, you, you find some things that are 
maybe shocking. Is, does that happen from time it, to time? It happens from many times. I get called in. It, one of the parties is saying, oh, this is, this is a walk in the park. It's, it's all brand, brand new, great renovations. Mm -hmm. They just did it last year. But there's, there's not much to it. It's for surface value. There's, 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 no, there's no information. They're not disclosing who, what, where, how, why, which contractor, if there's a transferable warranty. It just kind of looks clean on the surface. You dig a little deeper, and you're finding end-of-life materials, things that are leaking, systems that are failing, and you disclose that and report it, and hopefully the client will act accordingly on either negotiating that or making a sound decision and, and shopping elsewhere. And so sometimes, I guess, these de a deal can fall apart as a result? It can happen many times. That's not my intention. My intention is to educate and consult with the client and explain what the current conditions of that property are, and based on their subjective needs and desires, if, they can, if they're interested in moving in right away without any defects, if they have any money in their budget to move in, or they're just not ready for any of that. Right. Do you have one of these infrared guns that'll tell yes. you certain things? So what, what do people learn from, what do you see? I mean, because you said it's only what you can see with the, with the naked eye, which I guess is not true because <laughs> these guns can, can detect certain things. What do they certain tell you? Certain things. So they're very useful, but again, they do have their limitations. And you, I have a, with the new programming like HGTV and DIY and the internet and YouTube, clients are becoming more educated. So I'm getting a lot of phone calls last couple of years, do you do thermal imaging? And we do. And so just to give you a quick synopsis, thermal imaging uh, is a great tool because what it does is detects um, the SIG heat signature uh, that's radiating off uh, the surface of any object. And it can capture the smallest temperature differentials and display that on a screen for the user to interpret. That being said, it's not an x-ray vision. We don't, we, we don't have Superman vision with that tool. It has its limitations. It also has its excellent uses such as identifying heat losses. In some cases it can identify water problems and um, also it's vastly used in the electrical fields for uh, overheating uh, electrical conductors. Do you do commercial inspections too? Or do yeah, yes we do. So we have a commercial inspector on the team and he does more uh, engineering work. He does uh, larger industrial and, uh, uh, and commercial inspections and we also do small strip classes as well too. Okay. Condo units, sort of. So you'll, you'll take on any project, if not use yeah. somebody else's... Uh, yeah, we have an experienced team that can handle all sorts of type, all sorts of inspections. Right. And how long have you been doing uh, inspections? Personally, I've been doing it for seven years, but our team has close to 90 years of experience. So, what, so what's next for you? Uh, what's next for me? Well, yeah. something that I've already begun is, um, much like uh, Keith, is the education part, and I do seminars. I teach realtors... Uh, primarily out of the Keller Williams brokerages, so mm -hmm. they're North York and downtown offices. And I have seminars every month teaching realtors, educating them on what they should look for, how to improve their skills, how to impress their clients. Anything from, uh, from young realtors, new realtors, even experienced ones on, on topics from major foundation problems, how to detect uh, marijuana grow ops. So I'm, I've been, uh, been a big advocate of, of educating and furthering other people's knowledge in my how, field. How do you detect a marijuana crop? <laughs> That's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so education. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it makes sense. Once you have your knowledge, and you might as well share it with, uh, with many people, um, it makes sense. So. Absolutely. And we never stop learning as well, too. We're constantly going on for further education. It's never ending for us. You don't get your uh, uh, diploma, so to speak, and go out and, and then close your eyes and say, that's it. We're, it's, it's never ending, and we're always continuing our own education. Right. And, and it's, a good, it's good marketing and branding for uh, the company, of course, too. Of course. You know, uh, education marketing, I guess. They, uh, Absolutely. They call it. I won't be sending the text blast, but I will be inviting them, and, and hopefully they'll, uh, they'll show up for some Not yet. lunch and learns. Right, right. Very good. Okay, so now is that only for Keller Williams? Or? No, it's primarily based out of Keller Williams because they have a, they have a seminar circuit. And okay. so I've been, I have an educating role with them every month, sometimes twice a month. But any realtor is welcome to show up. Um, just check out uh, their seminar circuits uh, on, on their website or their, uh, their, uh, their educational journals. If you find me, you can find out which location I'm uh, training at. And any realtor from any brokerage is welcome. And I have, uh, I have my own list that I mail out, and they come periodically from other brokerages to learn. And there's no, there's no ties to okay. Williams whatsoever. So, so if somebody's watching and they want to attend, and uh, they can just go to the Keller Williams website? Go to Keller Williams website, find the local training training in the GTA and they'll they'll find my name and they'll see what what time and schedule that I'm that and I'm they training can come at. And, and they come can come in. visit me, meet me in person, learn a few things mm -hmm. and have a snack as well. All right. Well, that sounds very good. I might uh, I might stop by there sometime. <laughs> You're more than welcome. 
Okay, terrific. And of course, if you need a home inspection, uh, give Alan a call. We've got his no phone number um, on the screen for you. And uh, the website is almaxhome.ca. Almaxhome.ca. That's correct. And uh, check out those Homestar ratings if you, if you have a chance. on Homestars.com. Homestars.com. Uh, Hundreds of them. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, the uh, the positive feedback you have out there. 9.9 .9 out of 10. So I don't know, there must be one guy who maybe gave you a 9 and everyone else gave you a 10. <laughs> you can't please, all you can't please were, everyone. All I could see were 10s. Anyhow, thanks so much, Alan, for, uh, for coming to the studio. Really appreciate it. And thank you for watching today. It's not too late to get down to the Santa Claus Parade here in Toronto. So uh, you can go check it out and uh, be sure to be back with us next week on Thursday. 2 o'clock right here on All Talk TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.